All right, this is question five of our 2020 exam, and you can see that I've already started doing it because I started doing this and recording my voice with this, but I didn't hit the record button. So therefore I'm just gonna go through what I've written so far, and then I'll just finish off the question there as well. But let's start off with the first one here. I started reading this, then I realized the fact that I hardly ever read the introduction. I normally go straight to a question and then go back to the introduction because sometimes these questions, it can be answered really quickly without information from this introduction already. But write a balanced equation for cellular respiration. This was pretty straightforward. It's simply gonna be a glucose reacting with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. Now, the balancing of this is the same as photosynthesis, which is the reverse of that anyway. It's 666, six, six, and then I put in my states as well, ensuring the fact that my glucose here will be dissolved in my blood, so therefore it's going to be aqueous. It's going to react with oxygen carbon to form carbon dioxide, which are both gases, and my water, which is going to be an aqueous. Um, sorry, it's going to be liquid with my water. So therefore, that is my cellular respiration equation. The next question was, um, finding the linkage that connects my two disaccharides here, my two monosaccharides here. This here, I noticed straight away the fact that in my data booklet I have it, it's called sucrose, but that I didn't need that. All I needed to do was circle the linkage and name it, so therefore I circled it and highlighted it as being ether. Important thing here is to note that it did ask you to circle and name, so I had to do both of those. You could have named this a glycosidic linkage as well, but ether is what this is, is um, the generic term for it as well. Glycosidic is the um, carbon to oxygen to carbon in only sugars, but ether is the carbon to oxygen to carbon in any type of organic compound. Um, so therefore, that is your linkage that is within um, saccharides or sugars. Name two sugar units made up, making up this disaccharide. Again, if I go to my data booklet, I can see the fact that it's sucrose, but I can also see the fact that sucrose is made from alpha glucose and beta fructose. So therefore, it's just a matter of copying those two names from your data booklet in here. And then the th question three here was talking about um, cellulose and why we can't actually digest cellulose. Now, the key thing here is to understand that cellulose um, requires a unique enzyme to break down and humans do not have that enzyme. So it actually re requires cellulase. I don't think we need to know the name of that enzyme, but we need to know that humans don't have the enzyme that can break down cellulase. Now, the reason why we need a unique enzyme is because of the structure of um, cellulose compared with starch. And I look at this here um, and see the fact that here is my structure of cellulose. And I can see that that ether linkage is going up and then going down. And that is a different orientation to what all the ether linkages in starch and in my disaccharide of sucrose is as well. Because it's a different orientation, it means it requires a different enzyme. So therefore I've highlighted that in here um, when I've answered this question. I've said that humans do not have the correct enzyme to hydrolyze the ether linkage in cellulose. Um, this is because the ether linkage in cellulose is a different orientation to that of starch. We can break down starch, or I could also say slash sucrose here, which is what this one is, because it's there, it's just sucrose, sucrose. So therefore, um, I'm highlighting the fact that I understand why we need that extra enzyme. Um, being one mark, you probably don't need to add this next section in, but the key thing here is um, that is knowledge you should have anyway. Because of that orientation, we don't have the right enzymes to do that. And now we're up to speed with where I was. Here is part C. The table below shows the amount of each nutrient in 100 grams of banana. An athlete uses 300 kilojoules of energy for a five minute run. A typical ripe banana has an average mass of this. After it's peeled, how many ripe bananas correct to two decimal places would the athlete need to consume to replace energy lost during a run? Okay, so let's have a look at how much energy is pre present in a banana. Now this is per 100 grams, so therefore I could work out how much energy per 100 grams and I can scale it up to being that. So let's go with this, protein. In my data booklet, I've got the energy um, content of these different things. Protein is 17 um, kilojoules per gram. Carbohydrates are 16 kilojoules per gram and fat is 37 kilojoules per gram. 
So therefore, let's go with this. I'll take this and times it by 17. I'll take this times it by 16. I'll take that and times it by uh, 37. Dietary fiber will not be digested, so therefore I don't need to worry about that. So let's go up and say, okay, turn this on. Uh, 1.1 times 17 gives me uh, 18.7 kilojoules. And then what's the next one is 22.8 times 16 gives me 364.8 kilojoules and then 0.3 times 37 gives me 11.1 kilojoules. If I add all these up I'm going to get plus 18.7 plus 360, uh, 364.8 gives me 394.6 kilojoules per 100 grams. I could then scale it up to being per 116 grams, which is what a banana actually is. So let's take that and times it by 1.16, because that's going to be the, my scaling factor here. Um, and that's going to be 457.736 per banana. So therefore, if I take my 300, I divide it by how many a banana will actually, how much energy a banana will give me, I'll get my actual answer. So therefore, my bananas will be 300 divided by 457.736 equals, so 300 divided by my answer from before should give me 0 0.655 five bananas and I need to do that to two decimal places I need to round it to 0 0.66 bananas and that should be my answer to how many bananas I require. Key thing here is remembering the fact that your data booklet has the energy content here and that's going to give me my energy per 100 grams scaling it up to how much energy per banana and then dividing my energy by how much energy in each banana will give me this answer there a bit of logical maths involved with this question let's move on to part d and i've got during the ripening process the enzyme amylase breaks down starch molecules into disaccharides what is the what name is given to this type of reaction it's hydrolysis hydrolysis um, where we are breaking up basically what we're doing is we are breaking this ether linkage so therefore it's a hydrolysis reaction we add in water to break that up into our two things there so that's hydrolysis reaction is going to do that the amino acid lysine is present in the primary structure sequence of amylase. Draw the structure of this amino acid in a low pH solution. Okay, so I need to get to my data booklet and find the structure of lysine, and it's in a low pH. Low pH means lots of hydrogen, so therefore it's going to be a protonated structure. So let's find that here. Um, that's got isoleucine. This one has uh lysine all right so therefore we have got n h h h now because it's h2 we've got a low ph that means it's going to be acting as an acid so it's going to be acting as a base and accepting the um extra hydrogen that's present that means that's going to be positive that's going to be bonded to a carbon which is going to be bonded to a h then we have c h two and then to c h two there then to another this is a terribly drawn structure but um i'm just rolling with it here at this stage to two more h's and then that's going to be bonded to an n now this is another amine amine group sorry amino group so therefore this is going to be protonated as well so three hydrogens on that guy with a positive charge and then my carboxyl group here will remain protonated as well and that will be my structure of lysine at a low pH simply copied from my data booklet and then making sure that at a low pH both these amino groups will be protonated and that is the answer to part D2 and I think that's about it um, one thing to note with your calculations here um, 
they gave you a lot of room here, but I found it easier just to do some calculations up here. When you are um, doing that, that's fine to do the calculations where you are. Um, might make it a bit harder for the examiner to find your calculations, but you don't necessarily need to rewrite everything down here if it's quicker to do basic calculations here showing what you're actually trying to do. Um, that's probably the more important part of it. And I can see the logic of just taking that and timesing it in that way there. But that's more of a shortcut um, situation than anything else. Hopefully that makes sense. And now it's gonna be question six up next.